Hi, this, my name is uh, Jack Donguera. I'm the uh, chair for this invited uh, talk session. We have two very exciting uh, talks lined up, keyed up for you. Uh, and let me just uh, jump right in here. So I'm pleased to introduce uh, my friend and colleague, Yutong Liu. Yutong holds a professorship position at Sun Yun-Set University and is the director of the, Super, the National Supercomputing Center in Guangzhou. She's a member of the Chinese National Key R&D Projects HPC Special Expert Committee and a, and a leader of the innovation team of the Zhuzhong Talent Program in the Guangdong province. Her extensive research and development experience has spanned several decades of, of domestic supercomputers in China. She was the deputy chief designer of the Tianha 2 computer. She has won uh, the special prize uh, and first prize of a National Science and Technology Progress Award in 2014 and 2009. She's published more than 100 papers and has uh, 30 patents that she holds. Her continuing research interests include parallel operating systems, high-speed communication, global file systems, and advanced programming environments. She's undertaken some of the key, the national key R&D projects and major projects for the National, Sound, national Science Foundation China on HPC and big data. At present, she is devoted to the research and implementation of a system of application platforms uh, for the convergence of HPC, big data, and AI in supercomputing centers. And the talk she's about to give is entitled High Performance Convergent uh, Computing. Hello, everyone. Thanks for organizers to invite me. It's my pleasure to have chance to exchange ideas with international colleagues. My topic today is high-performance convergence computing, which is a growing technical demand from various application fields in HPC related. After the overview of development, the trends and challenges of convergence of HPC, big data, and AI are discussed from different aspects, such as hardware, software, and application. And then some practices we have done recently will be introduced. Supercomputing is an important part of the national innovation system plays a very important role in promoting scientific discovery, promoting social and economic development. It has the remarkable characteristics of timeliness, cutting edge, and strategic. Many countries around the world have set up a series of exascale projects, such as ECP in US, Flagship 2020 in Japan, PRACE in Europe, and national key R&D program in China. Comparing with general computing, supercomputing is addressing the ground challenger problems, leading human beings to explore the macro, macro, and extreme conditions of nature. At the same time, the software and hardware technology of supercomputing has greatly promoted and the development of IT industry. If we look back the development history of supercomputing in the world, from the first early supercomputer Cre-1 to Fugaku, the number one system this year, the performance of single computing system has increased by 2.5 billion times in the past 45 years, which is the fastest developing speed among all disciplines. The performance of supercomputing system is accelerated. Silence of times in every 10 years. Nowadays, we believe that several exascale systems are ready to come out. In the past two decades, China has put significant efforts in improving its capability of high-performance computing by implementing a series of key projects under the National R&D program. 
Thus, great achievements have been made. In the past ten years, we have three top one systems: Tianhe One, Tianhe Two, in which I was involved, and Shenwei Taihu Light, developed by other team in China. China has won the first place in top 500 for 11 times from year 2010 to 2020, accounting for half of the total. The capability of HPC has been improved and gotten pervasive use. System performance increased from 400 gigaflops to 125 petaflops. Also, develop various architectures. Try to make the HPC system easy use. Also, put many efforts on coverage of network. Data storage and analysis. We have made some advances in AI algorithms and technology. Another important point is to drive the development of HPC industry through the development of supercomputing technologies. The role of supercomputing center, I think, it should be the bridge connected large scale system with complex. Architecture and various application requirements. Nowadays, Chinese supercomputer center needs to face not only the needs of traditional scientific research, but also the needs of industry, social life, and urban development. To fulfill the various application requirements, we put many efforts to develop domain-specific application platforms. To help our end users to explore the efficiency of Tianhe Two and achieve their ultimate real goals for research or industry, the application field covers from earth science, material science, life science to advanced manufacture, new energy, as well as smart city. At present. There are more than 300 thousand users on Tianhe Two in Guangzhou Center. The statistics of application domain catalog is shown on this pie. You can see these are not only traditional HPC domains such as physics and climate, but also applications from biomedicine and smart city, combining big data, AI, and cloud computing. We have gotten some basic application achievements, but people's pursuit of supercomputing performance and application ability is endless. Exascale computing in China is around the corner. The development of exascale computer is facing great technical challenges, such as power consumption, application performance, programmability. Resilience, etc. Among them, energy efficiency is the biggest obstacle. We expect to control the power consumption of exascale system within 20 megawatt, but it is really difficult. Therefore, we definitely need new breakthrough technology. Further, we also need to tackle more issues, including how to balance. And make trade-off between performance, power consumption, and programmability. How to support wide range of applications while keeping high application efficiency, and to improve reliability of the large-scale system to achieve long-time, non-stop operation. New scientific and the societal challenges such as. Covered nineteen, the green deer, or quantum computing, require that scientists and programmers design new applications from scratch. The convergence of HPC big data and、uh, machine learning calls for the development and the maintenance of workflows with much more complexity than traditional simulation code. The requires experts with the appropriate skills. New and diverse hardware from various vendors, including new instruction set architectures, as well as new accelerators 
and dedicated solutions. Need to constantly redesign and update software. The increase of computational performance cannot rely on more slow anymore. On the contrary, advances in software engineering and algorithms will continue to bring order of magnitude speed up for various applications. So we need to explore application diversity and exploit hardware heterogeneity. There are always been a debate between special purpose and general purpose in the development of supercomputing architecture. It's obviously special purpose system might be more efficient on some specific faults. But Chinese exascale systems will be installed on general purpose supercomputing centers need to support wide range of applications. So we prefer to general purpose system design maybe applies special purpose customization. It might be a practical solution. About heterogeneous or homogeneous architecture, heterogeneous system could achieve better energy efficiency, but programming is a problem. While core processor approach or partitioned heterogeneous system may be an option. Many core-based systems could achieve better programmability, but relatively small memory capacity is a problem, and tuning is also not easy. About the execution model, control floor or data floor, the problems arose from how to handle the large-scale parallelism as well as how to reduce data access and transfer overhead. To improve the performance of general purpose processor, the method usually used is increased cores by reducing core complexity, wider SIMD unit, or improving on-chip cache memory, improving on-chip network. For accelerator, speed up specific algorithms to get benefits, such as FFD, deep learning, multimedian, etc. And there are other ways to increase on-chip heterogeneity, aiding on-chip special units for on-demand use. Application-aware architectures are also put forward. Understand behavior of different architectures in supporting different applications and general-purpose system enhanced by highly efficient special-purpose components. We have a few typical indigenous CPUs, such as Phaeton CPU and Matrix Accelerator, or Wuxi Shenwei Serial CPUs, and Huawei Quinpeng CPU and Ascensored Accelerator. Comparing with AMD CPU, NVIDIA GPU, Inter CPU, and XE GPU, etc. Those indigenous CPU and accelerators have different conceptual design architectures, different widths and levels of SIMD, committed to improving performance and reducing power consumption. Another important thing is mixed precision. 64-bit flat point arithmetic dominates in HPC for long term. But now, low precision computing is rising. FP16 may become a new expectation point in the future applications, both for HPC and AI, which can improve performance and reduce power consumption at the same time. We already have NVIDIA GPU and ARM CPU provided mixed precision. The vector instruction sets with hybrid precisions, but we still need transformation on software and application. At present, the mainstream supercomputing systems such as Tianhe and Summit use CPU and accelerator architecture and Taihu Light and Fukaku use many core structure, and DSA, domain-oriented architecture, or on-demand 
configuration structure will be used in the future systems. For the next generation architecture, less memory capacity and bandwidth per core are key challenges that need to be addressed. Another challenge comes from memory. In the past several decades, performance of compute processor increased according to the more slow, but memory performance is far behind. So the growing gaps on performance between CPU and memory become a big issue. How to deal with low ratio of memory to computing power? We may use hybrid memory, for example, DRAM plus NVM. Well, NVM is no refresh, saving energy, high density for capacity, fast and low energy rate, but slow writing, limited life. So we need to focus on how to take advantage of both DRAM and NVM. Another way is to put the memory close to the processor. Use the technologies such as on-chip DRAM 3D memory to improve memory efficiency. More and more, and more high-performance applications involve large-scale data processing which has frequent memory data movement, brings high access latency and high energy consumption. New computing architecture is required to pay more attention to data centric and realize computing with less data movement. Adopt new breakthrough technologies such as memory processing, PIN, near data processing, NDP, combine volatile and non-volatile devices to balance capacity and efficiency. We need to start new strategies and perform tuning tools to overcome memory access bottlenecks. About interconnect, the core of the pursuit is high bandwidth, low latency, low power, and good scalability. Energy consumed by interconnect is no longer negligible in exascale era. Optical interconnect is one solution. Make the optical connection closer to the chips. Design miniature of the optical devices. Scalability of the interconnection is important for exascale computers need to interconnect more than 100 sign nodes. Implement low hopes, low latency, reliable and flexible routing in the network. Another thing is resilience. A cross-card technology. Scale of access scale system expect to be around 50 to 100 sign nodes. Mean time between failure will be very short. Something like below one hour. How to guarantee non-stop execution of large-scale parallel applications? We need hardware, software, coordinated reliability measures. Hardware redundancy and reliability at different levels, such as device, node, super node, system, etc. We also need to pay attention to software for tolerance mechanica, such as fast checkpointing, context switching, with the help of NVM, for tolerance at the algorithm and application level, effective management of large-scale parallel systems, hardware-enabled fast fault discovery and isolation. We found that in large system performance tools can bring free performance gain sometimes. Performance gain by using tools may be greater than expensive hardware improvement and is free. Need tools for correctness, performance, and energy efficiency for systems based on homegrown processors, such as debugging tools, perform tools, energy efficiency tools, etc. Tools design and implementation depend 
of cooperation with processor designers. Processor design must consider the needs of tools, leaving the room for various counters, publishing access interface to tool development. In the all, the supercomputing system design is a kind of a trade-off. The balance among compute, memory accessing, communication, and I.O. capability in whole system view is most important. Talk about HPC, Big Data, Artificial Intelligence. The three things are essentially different in somehow. HPC help people to explore the unknown world through the simulation of the physical world. Big data analysis try to get insight of real world through the processing and mining of massive data. Artificial intelligence hopes that machines can replace human beings in decision making, lighten the burden of repeated work for people, or reduce the error rate of simple repetitive work. Therefore, there are differences in computation, I.O., and programming model. We can clearly see the trend of growing application requirements on HPC and AI convergence. On the other hand, traditional scientific applications have more and more data processing requirements and it is expected to use new methods of AI or machine learning to improve the accuracy of the simulation. On the other hand, AI applications such as voice processing, image processing, have higher and higher computing requirements. It is expected to improve the processing efficiency through the power of large-scale parallel computing. That's why we took talk about all driven by computing, fueled by data. People put many efforts on building a capable platform with variation, performance, productivity, adaptation, and involution to meet different needs. We are facing hybrid application cases on many types of architecture with mass data and data movement. We need to understand the future of different kinds of application, especially the characteristics of computation, communication, and I.O. future for HPC, Big Data, and AI, respectively. For HPC application, scalable computing in terms of both scala up and scala out, extremely large amount of compute operations executed iteratively and in parallel, significant fine-grained communication and coordination between nodes. For storage and I.O., HPC application usually has high bandwidth burst I.O. requests, with large volumes of output relative to inputs. Parallel file systems are prevalent. For big data applications, Tasks can be divided into multiple independent sub-problems. The computing is not as intensive as I.O. Exchanging data by file transfer rather than message parsing. Larger volumes of input relative to output with large volumes of intermediate data. Distributed file systems are prevalent. Appending data to file to relax log contention. For the AI application, such as deep learning, the computation and communication features are similar with HPC, except for the poor scalability at the time being. The storage and I.O. features are similar with big data. HPC, Big Data, and AI present significant disparity in terms of computing, I.O., and communication. Generally, different computing systems are designed to support the three of them respectively. 
Well, none of the existing systems can accommodate the three seamlessly. It's a challenge for us. As we talked before, convergence is driven by applications firstly. HPC plus big data, we call it HPDA, High Performance Data Analytics. HPDA generally extracts value from scientific data through extreme data analytics at scale. In HPC plus AI, we call it AI-enhanced HPC, optimizing the parameter selections of traditional HPC models. Furthermore, training an AI model to improve the traditional model. Convergence is also driven by algorithms. We can see clearly that the classical HPC algorithms showed by big data and AI. For example, we all know that deep learning algorithm has taken advantage of powerful computing, leading to very fast development and getting huge achievement. If we look detail on CNN convolutional neural network, its core algorithm is dense matrix and dense vector, which is optimized by HPC community for fewer decades. We got high performance BLARS library on various architecture and various scale. So if you can see that the other machine learning algorithms with first problem such as MCL, NMF, SVM is relatively far behind on HPC. We may have three different ways for implementation of convergence platform. First, we can use existing HPC infrastructure to run existing AI applications. Second, adding AI to the modeling and the simulation workflow to accelerate innovation and discovery. How could we go further to build combining HPC and AI modalities? And then let's see what kind of computing resources we have. Complement center resources such as supercomputer, it is lower cost but not on demand. Expert support, not uncommon to get 2 to 10 times performance improvement. Increasing real-time needs for instruments. And clouds provide a complementary service model. Could access to system with different configuration with on-demand access. And also could access to different software frameworks with the easy way to show data with services. Performance might not enough, so could we try to use both to solve the problems? To establish the capable platform from the basic cell level, we need novel supercomputer architectures to support big data and AI. And we also need the common mathematical models, methods, and basic algorithms. And programming models and the methodologies is important. On the key technology and the platform level, we need high efficient implementation of those algorithms and tools for performance and energy efficiency optimization. And we need runtime support and the platforms for applications. On the domain application levels, we need to explore applications characterized by a converged development of HPC, big data, and AI. And we also uh, need to reform application by new methods. To aiming the goal, for using advanced computing and data to create solutions that accelerated humanity's ability to solve the most challenging and interdisciplinary problems. We implement a platforms for
for fast generation and deployment of application platforms. Based on the software-defined and service-oriented principle, provide basic service for HPC, Big Data, and AI. Help users to customize application platforms. Design and implement runtime support, including resource adaptation, optimized scheduling, data sharing, and management. We developed a platform called Starlight, based on existed Tensor 2 supercomputer and extended to other centers. It implemented container-based OS and scheduler, constructed the kernel library shared by HPC, Big Data and AI, made some enhancements to parallel file systems to support convergence-oriented data management. The container visualization is a practical solution to construct the framework for convergence of HPC, Big Data, and AI on existing supercomputing environment focused on high-performance, flexible, and resilience. We constructed a kernel library including basic operators, such as computing engine for tensor, metrics, graphs, etc. On varied CPU architectures and accelerators, shared kernel library include dense verse, linear algebra, structured unstructured grids, and dynamic programming, Monte Carlo, etc. For domain-specific library, we have classification, clustering, query sort, inference, index. Those uh, algorithms paralyzed on Tensor 2 scalar to 10 to 100 sign uh, a course parallelism. For convergence-oriented data management, we implemented big data framework on parallel file systems, provide compatible interface for big data and AI applications, provide efficient shuffle strategies, and have done some application of well storage optimization. For the metadata optimization, we implemented a scalable metadata management with low latency metadata accessing and implement a high throughput requests processing. We also have done some intra-site data management, including vertical and horizontal uh, data placement, provide unified namespace with customized adaptive strategies and data well task scheduling support inter-size data management and data sharing across multi-sites to fit the needs of application workflows. There are some application cases implemented on the Starlight platform on Tianhe, on Tianhe system. This is refined weather forecast business system, which could finish 6 hours southern China 1 km weather forecast in 12 minutes. Combine simulation on HPC and data processing on cloud computing as by uh, deep learning to improve accuracy all in one workflow, running periodic continuously. In this workflow, we could further integrate high-dimension reader data processing using 10 terabytes of data to predict precipitation through deep learning model. Combine the deep learning model into scientific big data framework and process 32,000 pieces of reader data scalar to 300,000 cores on Tianhe system in a few minutes. The accuracy of the short-term and impending extreme weather forecasting is being improved. 
and this is a virtual drug screen platform. 10 million molecular dunking finished in 22 hours and 2 billion molecular structure similarity uh, calculation could be finished in 34 minutes. Real-time online analysis with high throughput visualization. We also have large-scale protein clustering platform. We have done a series of optimization on large-scale Markov clustering, dealing with computations on sparse metrics, communication intensive, many core well memory access, cooperating CMD and scalar function, etc. Processed 17 million protein molecules within 2.3 hours by uh, 345 sun cores on Tianhe. Uh, the platform has been also worked for anti cover 19 during pandemic. This is a reliable simulation of L polluting transport. The mathematical model is Lagrangian a particle dispersion model, MPTRAC, and inverse modeling. It is a case of a numerical simulation coupled with satellite data processing. Implemented high-resolution source estimation of volcanic SO2 emission using 1 point million cores improved the resolution from 2 point kilometers to 10 meters. And the traffic video processing over this platform could support 10 million vehicle image recognition and the accuracy is more than 95%. Support 10 billion vehicle image parallel search the efficiency is more than 3,000 frames per second. Support 10,000 channel video aggregation analysis on Tianhe 2. Cover more than five cities in Guangdong province. We can't imagine that without supercomputer. So HPC facing new needs. The emerging applications coming from computing science, data science, and intelligence science. For HPC community, a huge investment must have a huge general market in order to get the corresponding returns. We definitely need to tackle those new challenges. And the optimistic side is that HPC can fit new needs. Large-scale parallel systems managing and maintaining distributed architectures, running and optimizing high parallelism codes. High-performance computers should provide AI with a powerful and most practical platform. We already have enough experience for large complex application. Heterogeneous still be the first choice of the future HPC. So the trade-off for power efficiency programmability, acceleration, and we also need to jungling multiple domain applications. AI developed from computing to perception to cognitive. HPC needs to expand its capabilities to adapt growing applications. For the future platform, we propose 4C paradigm Compossible, configurable, controllable, capable, and also three model modeling computation, modeling data, and modeling pattern. We need to pay special attention to the innovation of parallel algorithms, including three aspects mathematical models, uh, mathematical methods, computer algorithms and the architecture-oriented algorithms. Domain-oriented efficient parallel algorithm library and program framework can efficiently improve software performance and reduce the workload and difficulty of software development. 
In today's era, we are faced with ubiquitous computing, ubiquitous network, rapidly growing data, and rapidly developing intelligence. The development of science, technology, and society depends on computational simulation, data-driven, and AI uh, enablement. In the future development of supercomputing technology, we need to focus on diversity and high efficiency. The stability of supercomputing system and application, the balance of performance, power, and the probability. Hardware systems need to be achieved multi-objectives, high performance, high productivity, adaption, and involution. Multimodal applications need to adapt multi-tap architectures. We will be committed to application-driven software and hardware co-design, independent innovation, high efficiency, and practicity. For a summary, supercomputing continues to meet the needs of emerging applications. New application drive a new business form. To realize convergence computing, we will pursue the theoretical and the practical innovation in computing science, data science, and intelligence science. Continue to do the core design on different level: core design of compute and storage architecture, core design of software and hardware and also uh, deal with the multiple application models and core design of line and WAN applications. Furthermore, the collaboration of interdisciplinary talents is most important. So I stop here. Thank you for attention. Thank you very much, Yutong, for that very enjoyable talk. And now we're ready for some uh, questions and answers. Uh, if you uh, can, there's a QR code there to scan to uh, enter your questions. Uh, Yutong is uh, attending, of course, virtually, and she's in China at the moment. And it's about, uh, what, uh, 12 o'clock midnight there, Yutong? Hi, Jack. Hi there. Well, it is good to see you online. You look great. So let me, um, th there's some questions that have come in. Let me pose these questions to you. Uh, the first one comes from uh, uh, Vivek Sarkar from Georgia Tech. He says, thanks for a great talk. And can you comment on the synergies and differences between a convergent HPC system and a cloud computing data center in the future or of the future? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, we, we have... Uh, done some work, uh, try to converge HPC big data, uh, especially on the supercomputer center. So, you know, uh, we already have the uh, HPC systems. Um, actually, the, uh, the something like the Starlight, uh, the platform uh, we're working, uh, now we are working on, uh, it's um, uh, driven by the application requirements yeah, that come from our users. Um, I think the difference between the cloud computing and HPC, um, you know, in, in cloud computing, we're all in, maybe in the, uh, all resources come uh, from the virtualization and the, uh, the container. But in the HPC, when we do the, uh, the simulation and the, the big data analysis, all the AI, something like that, we use uh, something like the uh, virtual machine combine the uh, biometal uh, nodes. So we, we will uh, try to, uh, you know, the balance, the performance, and the, uh, the easy use, something like that. So I still think there are, you know, in the supercomputer, we always pursue 
uh, the higher and higher performance. Uh, and for the cloud computing, uh, actually we also uh, uh, want uh, the application running faster, but uh, I, I think there's a, a more uh, convenient uh, use model, uh, it's uh, different. So I, I think in the future, in the supercomputer center, we will learn something uh, or will to um, establish some easy use platform for our uh, domain application uh, users. But uh, um, I, I still think it's a, a difference between uh, supercomputer and cloud computing, yeah. Thank you, Yutong. There, there's time for one more question, I think. And uh, yesterday at the Top 500 BOF, David Kahaner uh, presented some um, information about Chinese exascale supercomputers. And the question here is, uh, there's a rumor that China has perhaps two exascale computers which have not been officially announced. Uh, one of them, in fact, was named the Tianhe 3. Uh, what can you say about that? I, uh, <laughs> it's, um, you know, uh, the, they are, I, I think there's no uh, information on the top 500 list uh, uh, this time. And, and you, I think you all know that uh, in China, we have announced the three uh, prototype of access scale systems before. Uh, one or two years before. So what can I say that um, we are uh, we're still working, we are um, keep going forward, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, uh, Yutong, for that very um, uh, <laughs> politically correct answer. Um, I, I, think we're, I think we're out of time I here. Thank you uh, about that. Yes. <laughs> Well, I hope to see you soon in the future and uh, look forward to that. Thank you again for a very, uh, very nice talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. See you later. Well, one of the uh, nice things about uh, having a virtual conference like this is we can uh, go from China to, um, to Europe uh, in, in a second.